Hi everybody, this is Brian Koo with another ROK video and today we're going to talk about the new and upcoming Archer Garrison Commander and I'm going to speculate as to whether this new commander will represent a new power tier in Rise of Kingdoms. Right off the bat, let me just remind you a little bit about this garrison as Lilith has released some information about it. It's an Archer, Garrison, and Defense Tree Commander, and I will note that the Defense Tree is very good in Garrisons. This Commander introduces two new mechanics. It introduces a Mighty Heal mechanic, and it introduces a True Damage mechanic, which is actually related to Mighty Healing. Now I'm just going to go through these skills very quickly. I'm not even going to go through them, I'm just going to like put them up on the screen and remind you about them. As we get to the second page of these skills, you start to see what type of garrison commander this person is. The expertise deals more counterattack damage, and if the target troop has fewer units than the commander's troop, then the counterattack damage bonus will increase, and so any swarmer on this uh, garrison will actually take bonus counterattack damage. You can also see on the third skill that whenever the garrison is hit with a basic attack, then it has a chance to debuff all of the health and defense buffs of its target. And so again, if a lot of targets are swarming this, then that just increases the chance to proc this negation effect. So that is the new garrison commander. And the question here is, is this commander going to be overpowered? Is this commander going to represent a new tier of power in ROK, which at this point, it has actually been a long time since we have had a new power tier in Rise of Kingdoms. I would argue and will argue in this video that the last power tier we have seen started with Alexander Nevsky, who came out Wow, it came, Nevsky came out two and a half years ago, actually. It's been two and a half years since Nevsky came out, and I would argue we have been at the same tier of power the entire time. Nevsky is still an extremely good commander, and just talking about open field cavalry commanders, you know, one could say Joan is perhaps slightly better than Nevsky, but the latest strong open field cav commander, Huo, it's very debatable whether Huo or Nevsky is better. They're roughly the same in the field, but Nevsky is actually better as a as a rally leader and also as a garrison secondary in a pinch. So even as this game has released new commanders, Nevsky has still held strong. Now, one thing I want to say early in this video is that my assumption is that the Current people making design and balance decisions for Rise of Kingdoms are the same people who have been making design decisions since the game began. Now, I would argue that's the case for two key reasons. Number one, the balance of the commanders has always been very good in Rise of Kingdoms. Number two, the team has been very careful about not releasing commanders that are overpowered. The only commander who has been um, reduced in power after it's released is Attila. When Attila came out, many people considered him to be overpowered, and his stats or, or some of his skills were reduced to make him a little bit less OP. And when his stats were changed, all players who put gold heads into Attila they ended up getting a refund for those gold heads, and they had a choice whether to put those gold heads back into Attila or use those gold heads on any other commander they wanted. And that just goes to show you how careful they are, how careful they need to be about not releasing OP commanders, because if they do, and then they have to change those commanders later, then it's going to mean refunding gold heads to thousands of players. And of course, they're hesitant to do that, right? I mean, that's just, um, you know, it, there have been a couple other refunds. I think Chandra and Artemisia both got some refunds because they just tweaked one of the skills or they, um, 
It was actually on one of these, they actually just reworded the skill and then ended up giving refunds of all those gold heads. So it just shows you that their policy is they don't want to change these commanders. They really don't want to change commanders and therefore they have been very careful about not releasing commanders who are OP. That being said, there is there have been, you know, upgrades to the tier to the power tiers in the past. I think one could argue that perhaps Alex was the first power tier increase. Alex was not one of the original commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. He was one of the first um, released commanders. I believe he came after Saladin and after Genghis Khan, but he was in that next um, that next cohort of infantry releases. Alex was a very strong commander, but I don't know that I would say that he was a power tier increase. To me, the first power tier increase that happened in Rise of Kingdoms was actually Zenobia. Well, no, I'm sorry. The first one was Attila. Attila was the first power tier increase. When Attila and Takeda came out, they represented a march that was way stronger than anything else in the game. And at that point, once Attila and Takeda were added to the game, they were integrated into the meta, that allowed Lilith to then make all subsequent commanders more powerful as well. And so Attila was for the time, for a time, the king of the game, the best rally, the best open field commander, and everything that came before Attila was just not that good. Now, I will say that um, what happened is, again, after Attila came out, other commanders at Attila's level also came out. Ramses came out, and Ramses was a very, very strong open field commander he paired amazingly well with YSG. He gave march speed to archers. He gave healing to archers. And Ramses was uh, it was essentially an Attila level commander who came to the game after Attila. Now, I would argue that after Attila, the next power increase, and, and let's just check the dates on these. I didn't grab these commanders immediately, but so Attila was like uh, 2020. And then let's see what when Zenobia came out, because I think that Zenobia was the, the second power tier increase in the history of ROK. Zenobia came out about a year after Attila. And I will tell you that when Zenobia came out, she was extremely strong against the Attila Decatur rallies. And we, for a long time, lived in a garrison meta that was led by Zenobia, there, you know, Zenobia YSS made an absolutely great duo and there were there was just a time in this game where if you put a Zenobia YSS in a fort there was really no way to trade well against that garrison there was no rally that could get a positive trade on its own and because it was strong enough against swarm Zenobia YSS really ruled the day and you know this was the beginning of the fort wall meta this was the beginning of very long wars where it was hard to burn down enemy structures. Now, after Zenobia, I would say the next power tier increase was with Nevsky. Okay. Nevsky came out roughly seven or eight months after Zenobia. When Nevsky came out, it was pretty obvious that he was going to be a great commander. He has a ton of stats on his second skill. 60% of stats to this day is better than most commanders. He has a big nuke and a debuff on his primary skill. And his other skills make him both more tanky and allow him to do more damage. Nevsky was a very impactful commander in the game. But at the same time, you know, Nevsky ultimately was a very well done increase to the power tiers because Nevsky is not a garrison commander and he is not by nature a rally lead commander as well either. Now when Nevsky came out he did drastically reduce the impact of Amonitori. Before Nevsky came out Amonitori Artemisia was the best garrison in the game. There was no rally that could trade positively against Amonitori Artemisia. Although you could 
probably swarm this thing effectively. Back then, my kingdom, we didn't realize how good swarming a flag was, and so we actually did probably lose one KVK uh, because we just did not know how to deal with the Amonitori garrisons. But once Nevsky came out, the Amonitori garrisons days were over, and we have been at the Nevsky uh, power tier for a long time, in my opinion. I don't think we've had a new power tier. I think what has happened is that other commanders have reached, have been released at the level or slightly better than Nevsky, but they have not really changed the meta. I think at this point, one could argue that Lilith has actually gotten very good at just slowly and incrementally increasing the power of commanders, making commanders more specialized, and therefore not harshly disrupting the meta by nature of new commanders coming out. So I would say that since Nevsky, the three strongest commanders would be Zuge Liang, who is mainly an open field commander and a secondary in rallies, Heraclius, who is a garrison commander that is very good against swarming. I'm looking for it now, yes. Hera gives a 30% counterattack damage bonus which is very, very good. And it does a circle AOE to up to five um, troops. So Hera, in my opinion, has been an incredibly impactful garrison commander. It is the secondary of choice for Gorgo, Eleanor, and Dido. And then the third commander that has really sort of risen to the top of the tier rankings is Liu Qi. Liu Qi introduced smite damage to the game and it is arguably the strongest open field commander. It can also be used as a secondary in rallies with uh, Attila in artifact KVKs, and it can be used um, as an okay garrison, as a secondary garrison captain with Gorgo. And I think the thing I want to point out here is that Luchi, Zug, and Hera are the strongest commanders, but they're also supporting commanders. They are not, none of these commanders are rally leaders, and Hera really is not a primary garrison commander. He's a leadership secondary type garrison commander. And so in that sense, these commanders have been less meta-changing than other commanders. They have essentially made other commanders better. When Zug was introduced to the game, Henry became the best rally leader. The Henry Zug Garrison, or the Henry Zug Rally, became the strongest rally in the game. When Hera was added to the game, all of a sudden, commanders like Jan and Flavius, they were able to withstand Swarm a little bit better. And Swarming, although Swarming is still a very big deal in the game, Swarming is not as powerful as it was before Heraclius came into the game. Liu Qi is the same way. Liu Qi has sort of made other commanders better. He's made Scipio Prime better. He has made Alex better in an open field sense. And he has made Attila relevant as a rally lead in Artifact KVKs when you can make all of Liu Qi's skills apply to cavalry and then you have a normal attack damage doing anti-swarm rally with Attila and Luchi. So all of these latest commanders are, you know, again, they're they're sort of like secondary commanders. They're they're making they're making the meta uh, a creep higher in power, but not in a big way. This new archer commander is going to be a primary though. The new archer commander is going to be a primary commander, and so then the question becomes. Is this commander going to be a new power tier? Now, I am. I will say a few things in favor of it being a new power tier first. Number one, let's look at what this commander mainly does. It does healing and it does counterattack damage. And of the three power tiers that we had in this game, Attila, Zeno, and Nevsky, healing was part of was part of one of those with Zenobia. Zenobia did a lot of healing and anti-swarm and counterattack damage was a part of Attila. 
So, you know, those are the factors that can make um, a garrison or a rally more powerful. A garrison that has healing is pretty good. I mean, Zenobia to this day is very good against Swarm. You know, the, the most angry I have gotten in the last year in this game is when my teammates thought it was a good idea to swarm a Xeno Hera flag. And I was saying, no, let's not do that. Let's wait for a rally. And they just swarmed this Xeno Hera anyway. The enemy had cities nearby and was able to keep this thing full, largely because of the healing on the Xeno. And if I'm not wrong, I think Hera might have... Uh, well, Hera has shielding, right? Hera has shields. And so between the shields of Hera and the healing of Xeno, it's a very good anti-swarm garrison. And this new garrison does have healing. And it has counterattack. Those would be arguments in favor of this being a game-changing, potentially overpowered commander that all future commander releases will be balanced by. On the other hand... As I've alluded to in this video, Lilith has gotten very good at now only incrementally improving commanders. It has been, it has literally been two and a half years since there has been a stark increase in the power tier of commanders, which is when Nevsky was released. And since then, they're just doing incremental improvements. And this new Archer Garrison can easily be an incremental improvement and a specialized commander, right? It can be a commander that is the best uh, flag garrison, the best anti-swarm garrison, either with Hera or with the other new Archer commander that's coming out. And so I think it's very um, realistic to think that Lilith is going to tune tune these new commanders to not be overpowered because if they just bring in commanders that are the best garrison against swarming in the game then that is extremely useful and a lot of people will build that commander and it will slowly adjust the meta of the game more and the also the fact that this set this other archer commander that's coming out there is a possibility that this sec this other Archer Commander, which also has mighty healing, it might be the best secondary in a flat in a garrison with the new Archer Garrison. And so if these two commanders are coming out together and they're the pair of choice as a garrison, then again it's very easy for Lilith to tune these commanders correctly. Because they don't have to make either one OP, they can just make them work very well together, and that makes them both compelling. I will also add that the, because the new commander introduces new mechanics like Mighty Healing, this also means that there are probably going to be some of the newer armament formations that will be best in slot for this Archer Garrison. As a reminder, there are formations like Tetsudo Formation, and even more so circle formation that buffs the healing that is done by a commander. And because mighty healing is such a big part of not only the healing that the new Archer Garrison does, but also the damage it does, it may be the case that circle formation is going to be best on this new commander. And at that point, it just becomes more likely that the new commander is not going to be overpowered because if it's overpowered right from the jump, then what is, gonna, what is this commander going to be like when the biggest whales in the game develop a very nice set of circle formation armaments? And so I just think all in all, there's a lot of risk to Lilith making this commander overpowered right off the bat. And historically, if we now look at this game, we can see that they are very hesitant to create a new power tier and that what they actually prefer to do is very slowly and gently introduce new commanders that are either more powerful or more specialized than the commanders that came before it. And so my prediction is that the new Archer Garrison 
will not be overpowered. I think it will ultimately be tuned quite well. And when it enters the game, people will be very excited to build it because swarming a flag is a very big deal in this game. We are in a KVK right now with a very small King's Land. You can't build forts in King's Land. You can't teleport all that many farm cities in to fill flags. So swarming is a very, very big part of this game, especially in KL. And if you can add a new commander to the game that is not overpowered, but does that one job better than everybody else, then that will be meta-changing in its own way. It will not be overpowered, it will not be a new power tier, but it will continue to push the game forward in the same way that commanders like Zug, Heraclius, and Luchi have pushed the game forward as well. Let me know in the comments what you think about my speculation, my historical analysis of past power tiers, and what you expect out of the new Archer Garrison Commander. That's it for this video. Throw a like on it if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all on the flip side.